This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Tonight from the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. How was that? Hello, for, Alec. How was that? That for was great. Professional <laughs> introduction. Uh, Very professional, yes. Yes. Uh, Con- concise, professional. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? Good. I guess today, uh, California, we're taking our masks off, so... Really? Well, you know what happened here in New York? We we I, hit we hit herd immunity. We hit seventy percent vaccination. Okay, now that that means that uh, so that makes it so the virus can't. It makes it very hard for the virus to find a target, right? That's right. That's right. By the way, for people listening, I'm sure when this runs, this will like run probably on a. Friday, uh, that's this is this is old news to a lot of you in New York, but uh, the governor uh, made an announcement today that we had hit seventy percent as an average for the entire state, something like sixty eight percent in Manhattan, for instance. Uh, but that's close enough, and he's opening everything, you know. And I, he didn't say anything about masks, but I just assume that's the same, you know, no masks yeah. either. Uh, well, that's good news. Oh, it's great news. It's terrific news. I mean, after our long national nightmare. This was the worst year and a half of our lives, God. You know, I mean, after a year of disinfecting our packages. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is really, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I just heard that, uh, you know, in Japan, you know what their vaccination rate is? I think it's 3%. Three <laughs> percent, and they're holding the Olympics, and they're holding the Olympics. <laughs> Morons, morons. Uh, well, and, uh, well, I wonder why. They, I wonder if that's just a cultural thing, or uh, I think it's a. Uh, who knows if it? I don't think it's a cultural thing. I mean, come on. You know, that's where all the all the bugs come from, anyway. I'm not I'm not trying to pull a trump here when I say that, but the fact is that all flus start in Asia. Okay? Usually on farms. Usually more in China than Japan, but Yeah, but nevertheless, Japan's close enough to China where they become the recipients of the uh, of the diseases. And to not uh, only have 3% vaccination rate is absurd. It is absolutely absurd. Then you had morons like the uh, the governor of, uh, of Texas making it illegal for businesses to say you have to be vaccinated to come in. And then making it illegal to have vaccine passports. I mean, come on. You know? Well, like- California has a uh, you You don't have to show a passport. They have to take your word. They have to take your word. It's the honor yeah. system. All right. Well, there is a certain logic in that that I guess I could go along with if you if you really want to you know fight the logic here on this deal, uh, if there is any logic to any of this. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is that if you're vaccinated, you're probably not going to get it, and you're probably not going to give it to anybody else. So if you go in somewhere and you're not vaccinated, you're taking a chance on catching it. Yeah, they're the ones that are taking that chance. Yeah, but the people who are vaccinated are not going to. So I don't know why we need to ask if you're vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, okay, well, you're going to come in and you may catch something, right? Maybe maybe this will be our second don't ask, don't tell. Well, you know, I, I question whether we really need to whether we really need to ask people if they're vaccinated. 
uh, because if people want to take the risk of not being vaccinated and going into places without masks and so on, uh, they're risking getting COVID. And if they want to risk getting COVID, okay, go ahead. You know, you selfish. That's their choice. You selfish fuck. I hope you die. <laughs> you know, I mean. Well, I think in a year this virus be all but forgotten. Uh, 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 well, you say all but forgotten. I don't think the. I don't think the uh, the results of the uh, the what's happened in the last year is going to go away. I think. Oh, I think there's going to be some economic blowback from all this. Well, I think there's also going to be a psychological blowback as well. I don't think, I mean, I don't know that I'm ready to go to a crowded theater anymore. You know? Uh, And part of the reason is, why should I go there and get a cold? Okay? You know, because we know now that those places have not been um, ventilated well enough and the air has not been cleaned well enough to prevent you from, say, getting a cold or the early flu. You know, uh, the uh, colds and flus went down almost n- to nothing this year because we were all wearing yeah. masks. So have we learned a lesson about the mask? You know, I, I just might, uh, when it comes to, the you know, that time of the year when it's flu season, yeah, I'll get the flu shot, but I'll probably wear a mask too. Why not? And who knows what's coming next anyway. So, yeah. It'll be something else. But yeah. you haven't been vaccinated yet. Not yet. I'm going to get the, uh, I'm gonna get the uh, single dose, plus Jonathan and Jonathan. Yeah, it's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's not as 100% effective. Or as, I think uh, Moderna and Pfizer are like 95% effective. And uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson is something like eighty-eight or seven, eighty, eighty-five, something like that. But yeah, but you only have to do it once. That's a big plus, I think. You know, I I didn't mind getting the second one. You know, I mean, I just you just you just made an appointment and you went back and you got it. You know, and today it's so easy to get a shot. I mean, you just walk in, they give it to you. But then when I got it, you waited in line. Uh, the first line I waited in was two hours. Uh, uh, yeah, the second time I we went in, I told my wife, uh, she, she was kind of having leg problems, problems with her leg, and I said, bring a cane. <laughs> and she said, why? I said, just trust me, bring a cane. So she brought a cane with her, and we got out of the car. There was a whole line waiting to get in, and some people said, oh, you're seniors, why don't you just come right with us? And then they led us to the front of the line, and they said, you take that one, you take that one. We didn't have to wait. We were home before our appointment. So you got to take that senior advantage. (laughs) Uh, Believe me, you know, I mean, come on. Uh, I've gotten old. Uh, I'm cranky. Uh, All my bones in my body ache. Uh, I take a walk, and for me, a walk, a brisk walk, is a mile and a half, okay? Uh, and uh, which is probably laughable to you because you run every twice, three times a week. Yeah. But you know, I mean, everything's a little more difficult. So why, why don't I get that advantage that I told I was going to get when I got older? Like I get on a subway car, and they say, "Oh, please take my seat." Yeah. <laughs> no, uh-uh, no, never happened, you know. I never got the, what, the senior advantage. Forget about the discount. I'll take the advantage, you know. So I, I uh, 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 and and I, I just find that, uh, you know, being older never got me anything special now, except that one day when they said go to the front of the line. So the second one was easy peasy. Marjorie got okay. sick after it for a day. Uh, and uh for one day. Yeah, for one day. And then it was all okay, you know. And and the and the relief that it gives you, the freedom that it gives you is is very liberating. I mean, once I got that second dose and the two weeks had passed, I went, I'm home free. You know, I'm not gonna die from this thing. I mean, even if I get it, I'm not gonna die from it. So you know, I mean, that was pretty, pretty.
pretty liberating, I think. It's, it, uh, the first time I went out without a mask, because they said, oh, if you're outdoors, you don't have to wear a mask now. And people still do. They say, if you haven't been vaccinated, you still have to wear the mask. But if you've been vaccinated, no need to wear the mask. And the first time I walked down the street without the mask on for months, because the mask, you know, really hard to breathe when you're wearing the mask and walking, right, at a brisk pace. And, yeah. And, and anyway, what, the first time I did that, I, it was like the first time. You remember when you, the first time you ever went swimming naked in a pond somewhere or a mm-hmm. swimming pool? That that feeling of freedom, your balls are just floating. You know? <laughs> uh, I that, I got that feeling. You know that that rush that that it was all okay now, it was all going to be fine. So, and the you know the just the the fact that for for how many months did we live in a atmosphere of especially in my case? I mean because of my age, and and your age certainly falls into that category. Uh, uh, you know I lived in fear. We didn't go out. I didn't leave the house. For months, you know, and if I did, I went down to the uh, the uh, grocery store and I went with rubber gloves on and two masks. Wow. You know, and and uh, uh, you were very careful about all of it. And then you came home and you, you, you know, you, t- you took a shower with uh, Purell uh, and, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, and, and when we would get... Uh, we get an Amazon package, right? And uh, uh, they would bring it, and we'd have our masks on and our gloves when the people came, and then we would take the package and we'd put it in our foyer. And we would sp- imagine how fancy I am. I have a foyer. Um, uh, I, uh, we would just uh, uh, douse it with disinfectant, spray it with disinfectant, <laughs> and let it sit there for three days before we'd open really? it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> There was no such thing as overnight with Amazon. It was like three day because we had to let it sit there in the uh, in the foyer. We we came to find out those things were a bit unnecessary, but we didn't know it back then, you know. And the you last took no chances. The last thing you wanted to do was to get this horrible, horrible, horrible flu. I mean, this this killed. We hit six hundred thousand. We've hit six hundred thousand people dead. And they they claim that it may be well over a million. We just don't know. But for the ones we do know, it's six hundred thousand. That's pretty scary, you know. Well, not as scary as a hundred years ago, but. Well, it, no, I think this may be scarier because actually, if if the Spanish flu hit today, no problem, you know, antibiotics, boom, taken care of. In those days, we didn't have the medicines to do it with, you know. Uh, so, I mean, the Spanish flu uh, also, if we didn't have, they didn't have a war over in, in Europe. Uh, I mean, it, well, actually, it start, supposedly started, the Spanish flu started on a military base here in the United States. Started, yeah, in Kansas, and then the soldiers took it over to Europe, and then that yeah. got spread all over the world. Did they call that the American flu? No, they, they should have. Yeah, they called it the Spanish flu. Now, why is it the Spanish flu if it started here? Because I think the guys that took it over there—that's where they got the big outbreaks. Because they got they got it here, and then when they went over there, that's when it started so spreading it was, like crazy. So it was the Spanish flu. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, and how many people died with that? I think. Uh, Worldwide, they say 50 to 100 million, and the population was a fourth of what it is now. Wow. Wow. That, that's I think it, yeah, I think it killed 600,000 here, and our population was like 120 million. Did it kill 600,000? I don't think yeah. it was that many. Was it really? Yeah. I'll have to look that up. I didn't look know. it up with, with a third of our population, so it's yeah. like, uh, almost like 2 million. But we also didn't have the science to be able to fight it. You know, the best thing we could do is tell people wear masks. And they did. Some people did, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you look back at photographs of that era, uh, everybody's wearing a mask when they're in a public uh, venue of some sort. You know? that, uh, yeah. that freaked people out so much they didn't even write about it much in history. People just wanted to forget about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was really, really terrible. Hey, listen, it looks like we may have run out of a little bit of time here. <laughs> and we are, we are definitely running out of time. Yeah. yeah, we're definitely running out of time. But if you're listening to this on Friday, yeah, I know it's not news now that uh, that COVID uh, uh, has been uh, pretty much uh, stymied in New York State. We hope that it gets this good in your states as well. There's some southern states where it's not true. But anyway, talk to you next week, Larry. We will. Yes, we will. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, There's Larry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, And uh, we love, as we always say, we love Larry. Everybody loves Larry. Nobody doesn't love Larry, okay? All righty, I'm uh, I'm uh, turning up my my stuff here and getting all my sound just right, so I sound good. It's a Friday, folks, and uh, we don't have a long interview today, so we can get right to our citizen panel if anybody decides to call uh, to be part of the citizen panel. But uh, who knows if that's going to be so? Hold on a second, I just gotta uh, p- uh, put something here. What is it? Where where what's the problem? Why do we, what do we, uh, we're, we're, we run this, uh, they run this thing beforehand. Okay, there we go. I just want to make sure we were on. Okay. All right. Hello. How are you? It's, uh, I took my walk today. Nice walk. Uh, went out to, uh, the mirror, uh, that I like to go. I like to go over there. It's just, it's close and it's woodsy. Okay. And uh, it's the top of Central Park. If you ever look at a map of Central Park in New York, it's the very top. There's kind of a lake up there called the the Mirror. And then, uh, you know, it, it is in the top right-hand corner of Central Park. And I go up there and I walk. And uh, today I, I went out. I, in fact, I showed people what the sound was terrible, so I erased it. But I, I took people into an area where if you sat there, you feel like you're out in the country. You, you don't see anything that even resembles uh, a city. And you get out there, and it's wonderful. It's just it, magic. And then you just maybe walk 50, 50 feet in one direction or the other, and there's a road. You know, And you're out. You can see the park and everything else. But you can get into that park and, and feel just completely lost in it, like you're in the country. And it's really, it's really nice. I gotta say, I love it. I just absolutely, um, positively love the way it, uh, the way it, uh, it is there. And so I took a walk, and I walked up into the woods a little bit, and then I walked up some other places, and then I came back in a different way. I went a different. Well, actually, you can see here. I, I love this. This is on my iPhone. Let me see here. Do I have it? Do I have it? Uh, where is it? There, here it is. Look, now if I go here, I can actually show you. Here's, here's where I walked, folks. See that? See that line? That was my walk today. And uh, I, I went down. I even, I even went around in an area, if you look at the very bottom there. Uh, I, I went into a certain area, and then it's at like a circle. It's a big uh, circular garden, and I walked around it. Because I wanted to see a circle <laughs> on my map at the end of the day. But that's what I walked. See where my home is. And I walked all the way down there and all the way back. And uh, every day I do this, it really it really is terrific, you know. makes me feel great. And uh, I hear all my circles and stuff that we, I fill up uh, every day. And uh, that, uh, that, that pretty much says it all. And so that's my walk, and it's, uh, you know, I, I started to think about it, and I said, you know, I'm cr- probably like getting to be an old man, uh, because I'm, oh, I am taking my walk, I'm, uh, you know, i got to take my walk today, yep, 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 you know, so anyway, I t- took my walk, and I had a nice time, and uh, it was, uh, it was terrific. Um, well, we only got two people waiting to talk to me right now, and probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that I usually have been going like uh, 25 minutes and last night I went 40 minutes 
before I got to my citizen panel, so I'm getting what I deserve. Also, I'm, I, I am considering, and one of the thoughts I have about this show is moving it to just Fridays. Uh, just Fridays. Then everybody will be waiting to come on and talk to me, and everybody will be excited. Here, everybody takes it for granted now, and people don't call anymore, and, you know, they, or, or they don't, you know, it's just, it's not the way it was. And uh, so I've been, I've been considering that as one of the plans. The other one is a shorter show, but I don't know that that would help at all. Uh, I, I want something that's going to make this whole thing a little more precious than it is, you know? Uh, and I notice that most people on the web don't do four shows a week, you know? But it's the old radio thing in me that says, hey, you got to do uh, four shows a week or five shows a week, and it's got to be three hours, but I've cut it down to an hour and a half. But that's an old radio concept. And I think that maybe if you just do like one great show a week, and I'd, I'd also keep my Monday thing going that every, those people love. I just love those people. Uh, that if I kept that going, then the, between the two things, it, it, everything would be a little more special, you know. But uh, I can't, you know, I can't figure it all out. So I'm just going to try and decide what I'm going to do later on, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have with that. Okay, let me go to, uh, we have, uh, what is it, uh, four people waiting? Okay. Well, actually, we have, uh, let me see here. Um, I, I did that. Wait a minute. Oh, I got to do this. Okay. Admit all. Okay. Watch as everybody pops in here. Here they go. There we go. There's John Larkin. There's Charlie Wallace. There's Josh Wheeler. Uh, there's Trucker Steve. We just got, we don't actually have Trucker Steve. We just have a picture of his, va of his truck. Actually, but, we have, uh, let me see here. Wait a minute. And what's that? I, I did. Who, who's got their audio on? There we go. All right. We're, we're better now. Uh, hello, to, uh, hello to John Larkin. Hello to uh, Josh Wheeler. And hello to Charlie. And, and that's it, folks, uh, for now. And Trucker Steve, who is not connecting his mic and doesn't seem to be in view. Maybe he got truck jacked or something. That's always a possibility. Hey there, Josh, how you doing? I'm okay, how you doing? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're really excited about the day, yeah. Uh, a rough week. It's been a rough week? How's it been a rough week? Uh, I mean, it, you know, works pretty tough. You can't get anything to make anything. What do you mean you can't? chain issues. Well, explain that. You can't get anything to make anything? No, a lot of supply chain issues, you know. Now we can, as soon as you start making stuff, now we can't get packaging to put it in. And Why is that? It's just supply chain shortages all over the U.S. of all different <clears throat> kinds. There's still a resin shortage for certain resins from the shutdowns in the Texas and Louisiana earlier in the year. And, uh, and is this all because of COVID? Uh, a lot of it, yeah, and then, you know, some of it was because of the shutdowns in Texas and yeah. Louisiana. A lot of the, you know, a lot of resin is oil refined, and, you know, a lot of the oil oh, okay. refineries are in those two states, and they were offline for a few weeks. And then there's manpower shortages because there's a labor shortage nationwide. Do you have, do you have a, la a Well, do you have uh, a la labor shortage at your plant? You, you, he has a paint, works for a paint company. Yeah. No, no, not not really. Uh, um, no, that we're okay. Our our other plant in town, our our powder coatings plant, um, is short quite a few people and has not been able to hire. So they're having trouble keeping up. Uh, yeah, there's a tanker truck shortage. There's plenty of tanker trucks, but there's nobody to drive them. So even when there is resin available, there's no one to bring it to you. And. Uh, just goes on and on and on. I'm pretty sick this week, and one of our cats died today. Oh no! Oh, shitty day, you know. It <laughs> is a really shitty day. <laughs> you know, losing a pet's terrible. You know. Yeah, well, she was pretty old, but I know. Old. And you say that, and you say goodbye, but you 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 know, we really bond with an animal. 
You know, it's it's a and it's a wonderful bond actually, but it's still it's a bond nonetheless. You know, so what the hell, you know? Oh yeah. uh, well. So so it's not been a good week or a good day. No, I mean you know I mean just I don't know how many people realize it depends what industry you work in or whatever, but you know nationally there are some issues that are making it hard for many products to be either produced or delivered. And I think pretty much everyone's aware of, but maybe not to the extent of it. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's just a lot going on that keeps a lot of manufacturing right now from from running. And even if they are running, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that are doing, you know, five or ten times the work that they normally would have to do to just mm-hmm. do their normal job. You know, it's wow. very, very stressful and it's... uh it's pretty, pretty tough. I mean, look, I'm I'm bringing I'm bringing plastic panels in from California, Oregon, Nevada. I mean, that's how far away we have to go to get a simple thing that we use twenty thousand of a week. Some, you know. So yeah. I mean, yeah. That's just kind of uh, kind of the situation. Can't do anything about it. Yeah. Does somebody have their their audio yeah. on? Uh, who? Oh well, it's gone now. So. Yes, uh, John, did you say something? Yeah, yeah, San Francisco's having this uh, really bad problem with uh, uh, retail stores. They can't stay open, like, be- because there's so much theft going on. There's, like, people just going into, like, Walmart, I mean, Walgreens and CVS and just filling up filling up bags of stuff with merchandise and just walking out the front of the place, and, and they can't do anything about it. And then they all go and sell it on... Uh, you know Amazon, or they sell it at you know on the street in in uh, United Nation Plaza. Well, you can't steal something and sell it on Amazon. Why not? Sure, you can. Where do they know where it came from? No, wait a yeah. minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, basically, normal products. I don't think they would let that happen. Uh, the what you're probably thinking of eBay. A lot of people will sell stuff they stole. <coughs> you know. Right. But how's Amazon going to know that if you got like exactly. a case of a case of laundry detergent, you know? Yeah. How's they gonna, how are they going to know where yeah. you got it from? Yeah, but how are you going to sell it? First of all, you have to get a, 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 a some kind of a relationship going with uh, Amazon, and so then they're going to say they're going to say why Amazon it, sellers? No, no, they give a cut to the people that are stealing. No, no, yeah. no. Well, yes, that could do. be. That, that could be. But I mean, if somebody Absolutely. just says, if I go on Amazon and say, I want to sell a case of Tide, you know, uh, they're not going to let me do it. You know, they're going to go, what do you, what's your business? You know, what oh are you, what God. are you? No, sure they're not. not. The you worst sure? thing Amazon may do is dictate the price and say you have yeah, to. But, but are you going to tell me that there isn't a lot of stolen items sold on eBay? Oh, on every site. Etsy, yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, 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 uh, the Gap closed, uh, you know, the main Gap on uh, at Powell and Market, that closed. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, all the Wal- Walgreens are closed up. Look at the room there. Well, are they closing because of the theft, or are they closing? What is all that noise? They're, they're oh, closing okay. because yeah. of the theft. What, what, what is all that, uh, what is all that, uh, uh, because of the theft, you say they're closing down, or are they closing down because? Because of theft. Yeah, they can't do nothing about it. I mean, they can't afford. I mean, they they'll hire like a, a security guy to stand there and watch, but a security guy can't stop somebody from walking out of the store. You know, I mean, you know. They showed, they showed one on TV the other night that that uh, <clears throat> filled up a garbage bag, and the yep. security guy and the uh, store manager sat there and videoed it the whole time yeah. while the guy was on his bicycle. Yep. Yeah. And he was loading up a garbage bag with stuff off the shelf, and he tried to grab the bag on was well, as he was wheeling out the front onto Market Street, wow. and it was. They said that it was less than nine hundred and fifty bucks. They weren't even going to prosecute him anyway. No, well, the only problem we have here in New York is murder. You know, so <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're just getting away with it because of that. It's because of that California law that they they passed a couple years ago that they weren't going to prosecute anybody. For that petty stuff, 
why not? Or with, wait a minute. No why, why not? I mean, may, or is it that it was just costing the state too much to prosecute it? That, yeah. that plus they're just letting everybody get away with it. You know, letting everybody get away with the petty petty crime. <laughs> I mean, even yeah. with stolen yeah. cars, Excuse they're letting me. them come come in and <laughs> process them and letting them go. My coffee just yeah. went down wrong. <laughs> Are you having coffee too, somewhere? I myself, but I, if I had seen that, I would have gone and grabbed a nice bottle and would have whacked the fuck out of that motherfucker. But you wouldn't do it. Me? Oh, you I would. Oh, you'd get really? sued. You could get sued for that. Yeah. They yeah, never no. know who did it. I have a mask on and a hoodie. Who's going to say anything? <laughs> Motherfucker is ass out. Come get me. Oh, I'm going to be a hero. They'd never oh, know. Mm -hmm. We you thank you, you masked know. lady. Well, you know, I'm Who was that masked lady anyhow? And then you'd say, hi, wow. Volkswagen away. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Just, hey, you know, just... we had an we had an incident with uh, critical race theory out in the valley. This poor teacher, so she's got this Nazi administrator over her shoulder. So I'm an advocate for special ed. So if a parent doesn't understand this, the whole special ed thing, I come in fully suited in a nice Armani suit with four attorneys, depending on, you know, I do my background on the school and I represent the parent and the child. So, you know, back in April, they went back to hybrid. So out in the valley, it wasn't our school district. This poor teacher, and she did not want to do this. So she has a Nazi administrator on her ass in the class. And there were three special ed kids. And so what they, the poor teacher had to segregate them by race, ethnicity, sexual gender, uh, religion, and disability. So she has to do all that, blah, blah, blah. Well, this poor special ed kid who is actually triracial in between classes was beat up, brutalized and terrorized by two kids, one being African-American, the other one being South Pacific. So I do. I get a phone call and they tell me what's going on. I'd say, tell, have the parent call me. The parent calls me and I said, you need to call the police. Well. Oh, my husband's affiliated, and I go uh, affiliated. Well, wait a minute. Why, 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 why are you asking them to call you? I mean, shouldn't they be doing whatever they got to do on their own? Uh, no, because when it comes to special ed, I'm telling you, my son is is on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So you know, a lot of parents have to fight to get their kids to have the proper. Okay classroom things so i'm an advocate there's a lot of people that okay know. okay understand okay i was wondering what so what was. happens is uh the wife said well my my husband's affiliated and i go well like how with a certain gang and i go well listen where's your husband now he's at work listen this has nothing to do with that do you have witnesses yes do you have statements yes okay so i said you need to call the police and you need to have these kids hooked mm -hmm. up they're 15 years old um so i'm driving to the valley and i and so i start saying well let me know about the parents because listen you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree so is it the parents that are raising the kids this way or do these kids have issues because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i'm going to do everything i can to get these kids help oh no these families are just an absolute nightmare okay well was it the teacher no the teacher had a nazi over her shoulder well guess what this family just got paid. Mm -hmm. The two families and the administrator sold their houses and paid. Okay, this okay. L let me stop you there because what you're getting into are the minutia of this whole situation, and it, it kind of gets a little lost well, in translation. Well, you know, certain certain aspects of this with the CRT I agree with, but once you start segregating the kids, especially kids that do not have the mental capacity to understand this. What happened is this kid was triracial. He is a very light skinned mm -hmm. Mexican Eurasian. So his mom mm -hmm. is. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this is a this is kind of a real personal case, and it, it, it doesn't uh, well, make a, it, it, I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to the rest of us. You know, I mean, you get what I'm saying. It, it's like you're t dealing with the minutia of it. If you look, just oh, looked at God. The, the whole thing is becoming a nightmare. I mean, there's families. Well, going apparently up. it is because you're you're you seem bothered by it. You know, I mean, when I have attorneys, I mean, this kid was beat up, 
terrorized. I mean, a broken arm and two black eyes. And what and was then, the what was the reason why? In other words, what was because the Because the kid didn't know whether to answer whether he was an oppressor or oppressed. Well, wait a minute. So by who? Said, who was he asked this by? By the teacher. What? And then the kids beat him up for that? Oh, absolutely. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not. I'm, I'm glad I don't have. I'm, I'm glad I don't have a kid to send to school. Oh, I'm telling you. I mean, the nightmare. The way they're going about this mm -hmm. is really wrong. I mean, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to kids that don't have the capacity to understand it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, here comes here comes Jeffrey. Okay, I wonder where Jeffrey was. We also hey, haven't heard John. from Brian. This is the second night we haven't heard from Brian. He hey, John, you should go to work as security there. <laughs> Make a lot of money. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, right. Yeah. What happened to What happened to Schmoody? I just got a message. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> hey, sorry. Uh, hey, John. Um, you know, I was spending a lot of time over there, where you are, for COVID. And as you know, probably there's already a lot of stuff going on before the virus. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's got nothing to do. Yeah, with I mean, the you see it all the time. It's got, yeah, it's got nothing to do with the virus. It's just, it's just, you know. Well, there's been good. an increase in crime. Like, for instance, here in New York, murders are up. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh, I think, I, I, I knew that was going to happen. I said to, to um, a girlfriend when we were in the middle of COVID, when this is over, there's going to be a crime spree. People are going to go crazy. Okay. Yeah, Alex, they're shooting every night. I listen to 1010 10 Windsor at night when I go to bed. Like, ready one? Every <laughs> night I hear the news, another shot, another person shot. They get they hit some guy in the back of the head, some gang fight the other night. I saw something on TV today of some guy shooting a guy. Yeah, I saw And that. these two kids were in the yeah, middle of it. Yeah, did you see that? I couldn't believe it. I think it was up in the Bronx. Come on. Come on. Uh, uh, okay, Alan's got his hand up. It Alan, was wild. guns. Wasn't that crazy? Crud. What's with the guns, huh? huh? What's with the guns? You got to get Phil on. What has he got to say about this? Well, they wait a minute. Wait a minute. Al, like Al is a big, hey, Al's a big gun guy. You know. What about it? Well, what I mean. About it? What happened to? The Wild West here. I, 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 hmm? What do you want to know? People have guns. People use guns. What do you want to know? Well, about? They, use them, they use them badly. Yeah. yeah. You know, here's the thing. And, you know, and I fit partly in this. The liberal people want to defund the police. Okay. Now a lot of a lot of places are defunding the police, so the crimes are going up. What do you well, want? I well, think what they should do. Well, I, I, I think that the idea of defunding the police is a bad idea. I think the idea to I agree. Wait, wait a minute. I think the idea to refund the police is more in line with what we should be talking about, and that is that we need to be uh, at looking at the police budgets and saying, hey, there's too much money being spent here. Let's take some of that away and let's appropriate the money in, in the ways it should be appropriated. I also <laughs> think that we should do away with cops going out on domestic uh, domestic calls. Uh, so, uh, so, in Los so in Los Angeles, the, the defund the police backfired on the black community. A white officer gets dispatched to a black fight or something like that they drive up to the call say they're there if the fight's in the street they sit in the car and watch it and then if nobody gets well killed, i i I, di I disagree with you that it's defunding the police because we're still too uh, too near it was too near the time when people were yelling defund the police but there haven't been any real moves to defund them oh yeah there has well like where well, I, you know, in, in like uh, Minneapolis, they they've uh, they, they're they're talking about going to private uh, police. Yeah, well, but I don't no, like that idea at all. Uh, oh. in, 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 radicals, but no, in, nobody serious is talking about defunding the police. It's all, you know, it's just all these radicals. But you got to I mean, get off MSNBC, John. No. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm no, I agree with John Larkin. I mean, that, that a lot of people were talking about defunding the police, and should we defund the police? Uh, give us, turn on your camera, uh, Schmoody. All we Fuck. get is all we get is a gray picture. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, the oh. breasts. <laughs> he went. Oh, the breasts. There you go. Okay, <laughs> now, we're, now we're talking. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I always, when I went with her, I, I always liked flying with her because if the plane was going to crash in water, I had two flotation devices with You me. betcha. <laughs> I've got floaties, as my niece would say, water yeah. lemons. Water lemons. Anyway, yep. no, but the point is that uh, the defund the police thing, a lot of people talked about it. Very few people did anything about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. we started thinking about it and realized that's not a very good idea. Well, I mean, I think we have to refund the police. I think we have to go to each police department, look at what they're spending, where they're spending it, how they're appropriating the resources, and also include in that a great deal of educational programs for the policemen and also a lot of psych psychiatric work done on the policeman to make sure that the type of person that should be standing out there on a street corner with a gun in his holster. So in, and you in know, San the Francisco. whole police immunity thing is good God. Yeah. It's well, bullshit. So in San Francisco, they're trying a new thing. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're doing kind of what you're asking. They are taking people that are nuts on the street mm -hmm. people yeah. that are nuts in general and need services and they're taking it out of the police's hands mm -hmm. and giving it to a psychologist that's good and fine except for a lot of police officers that are killed dealing with crazy yes so now, but they feel they feel that these psychiatrists or these mm -hmm. uh, mental health experts mm -hmm. will be better equipped to deal with people who are irrational like that, and 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 also because they don't show up with a gun, they don't yeah. show up with their lights will, blazing. Wait a minute, on their on their police car, that it that's going to defuse the situation. Where sending a cop infuses the situation. I I have no no qualms about that. I, I agree. That I think you're right. The trouble is, is the bad guys. You know, the, the people that are crazy or that are having a domestic fight don't always want somebody to interfere. And those people are going to get killed at a much higher rate than the police. Because the police have bullet resistant vests and ways to defend themselves. I still think that if you send somebody out who is a professional with this sort of thing, they will know how to be able to okay. calm down these situations. I don't think a cop showing up with a gun, with, with a gun and with mace and all those other things, and with the car, with the lights blazing, uh, is necessarily something that's going to defuse even a, uh, a domestic dispute. Okay. 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 We're going we're gonna to find out. If, if, the the psych cop, if the psychologists uh, start getting killed. Yeah. Okay. If uh, they have cops walking the beat more often, I think they, things would be a lot better. Well, they, they walk the beat in San Francisco a lot. Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, but they don't do that everywhere. Mm -hmm. No, they Not don't. like any old days. Mm -hmm. No, they don't. You're right. Did you have your hand up, uh, Ray? Yeah, I was just going to say that um, I believe that in England and France and some other countries, the cops usually don't show up with guns. And I've watched a couple of videos. They seem to be better trained calming people down, I noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not and they are police. That. They are police. They're not psychologists. But I'm they not, seem to have a little more training. I'm I think we have very badly, uh, overall, the whole country. I think we have badly trained police. And I think they're tra badly trained because especially when you get to some of the smaller communities, they don't have the budget to train them like they should. In uh, England, I believe training for a cop takes a year. Here, it's only like six weeks. That's you know it. What then I you're on the beat with a gun on your, on your uh, hip. What? You know what I think they should do? Uh, my sister's friend, and I know him, Tim, he's a retired cop. Mm -hmm. He signed up first. He's, he's like 56. He signed up first out of high school to go to the Army. So he did four years in the Army. Then he came out, took a police test, and went in. And he felt by going to the military, that got him in the right frame of mind to train, know how to use a gun. He was actually more, see you know, he never fired at one guy one time, 20 years. He took his gun out, never fired, right? Yeah, yeah. He says, like my, my nephew's uh, friend, Logan, he's going into, he's in the academy now, the kid. If you saw this kid, I can't see how, I told my sister, how this kid Logan's gonna be a cop, they're gonna eat him alive. He mm -hmm. is so white. I'll tell you, every time, every time we see some kind of altercation between the police and somebody with a gun and so on, um, Marjorie always says to me, and she's right, why don't they shoot for the legs? 
Well, they, they aim to shoot for the chest. Tim, they're right. They shoot to kill. Yeah, they shoot right? to kill. Am I right? When right that gun comes out, they're firing to kill. Like, yes. and, and Alan was a cop, so he can answer this for me. But shooting to kill seems to be the order of the day rather than the exception, which it should be. What should, what do they're you trained to it's shoot the at the midsection because all your movement, and we learned this in basketball, all your movement <laughs> you comes this from in... the belly. I love that. I mean, we... try shooting an Ira. Try shooting someone doing a damn jig. Kathleen. Yes. Can I? When you were dating Alex, did he ever watch a basketball game with you? I was wondering if he ever like flipped the game on. No, you know, one time, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. Bob Rubin and I were in the other apartment, and we were because Bob Rubin loved the New Orleans Saints. Okay. And so Bob and I are in the other apartment. We're watching football, and Alex comes in, and he's like, oh, Kathleen. And Bob turns to me and goes, busted. <laughs> I mean, I think maybe if you had a so game busted. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right. I, you said a polar I just opposite. wanted to say one thing for the shoot to kill. I, you know, um, if you don't shoot in the midsection and you happen to be able to hit the armor leg, which, let me tell you, is hard with a pistol when someone's moving and things are escalated, Mm -hmm. They're hyped up. Their adrenaline's going. You hit someone in the leg, they can still shoot you. Yeah. Um, there. It's a huge problem to shoot somebody in the arm or the leg. Hey, I know. All I'm saying is that when you're leg. when you're a cop and you show up, you have at your disposal, you know, more devices to protect yeah. yourself between the bulletproof vests and all that stuff that's on the belt. You got the mace. You got the tasers. You got the gun. You got the this. You got the that. Plus, you got a two-way radio where you can call for more help. Uh, quite frankly, I think the cop is more protected in his job well, than I am in mine. Are, okay. Most cops are killed in domestic disputes, because, and most of the time it's a man because the woman's getting the shit beat out of her. She well, calls nine one one. But it's like the husband's yeah. like. But it's I'll it's, take it's like I was saying. It, it was like I was saying a few moments ago. If we didn't send out cops, we sent out health mental health professionals to those kind of things we and they don't show up with guns you're probably not going to have as many people dying as the result of this domestic disputes i think what causes it is people showing up with guns with their lights blazing the whole thing the whole the whole nature of it only incites an already bad situation it's hey, true when 50, you see a cop cry, if this guy dead, has a dead. gun and he's threatening his significant other, mm -hmm. anybody comes to the door is fair game. Yeah. Hmm. Why don't Alex? Why don't you just admit it? You're totally against the police. Everybody oh, else I on the I show, hate, I, to be honest with you, on the show is defending the police, and you're. To like, be honest with you, boom, for boom, years boom. and years and years, I've actually hated the police. Yes, and we know. Yes, <laughs> and and it do. comes from a. And you can't say that over the years the police haven't been absolutely terrible. I mean, why you know. hate the police? I hate. I'm neither Democrat or Republican. I hate both sides because they're so fucked up. But I truly hate politicians because the politicians are the ones that set the rules for everything else, and they decimated our mental health facilities. Yeah, these and they released them. everybody into society. Well, a good example with in, no Cal in, in, Cal in, 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 in safety nets. In California, in, in California, yeah. Ronald yeah. Reagan yeah. was the guy who closed down all the mental facilities and put yeah. the people Terrible. out on the streets. We just Terrible. came back from Brooklyn, me and my brother, for cake. And yeah. you had to see getting on the the expressway. This guy had a whole tent. Of, it was sad, begging. Like he had a tent where, where, where were you? Did you we, say we were coming back from Brooklyn oh, from some okay. cake? We went to get cake. Yeah, I thought you said. And we were coming back on the expressway, mm -hmm. right? But we went past my mom's old house too. So when we're going on the expressway, this guy's always there. My brother, look, he's there again. He never leaves. It's sad because you see so many homeless. They need to be rounded up. They can't be living like this. Yeah, Reagan is a despicable human being. Yeah, well, the, that 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 hit California. Let me ask you. Uh, 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 I mean, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want to I want to bring uh, some people into this conversation who've been quiet, like Josh. And Kevin and so on. Josh, how do you feel about this? I mean, do you you don't you don't agree with the funding of the police, do you? No, no, I would not. I mean, if you want to make some simple reforms of certain policies, I think that's fine. And mm -hmm. uh, I would say we could make an investment into them for you know training and resources and 
you know, other things to back them up. And, you know, look, if some departments want to hire psychologists or people trained with, you know, traumatic events, Mm -hmm. I, I would say that's probably a worthy idea. I mean, I think I read a headline anyway earlier that said, uh, missoula montana or somewhere was going to do that and uh i mean you know even in backwoods places that you wouldn't think about not large cities or whatever are are going to try that and i think if you want to maybe send those people out Mm -hmm. you know or have them assigned to a precinct and maybe when some of these calls go in they can make their way over there Mm -hmm. and the police can sort of you know step aside and let that person kind of take the lead I mean, you know, no, no different than you would do with like a hostage negotiator. Or right, whatever. exactly. Exactly. Well, who's going to come in and, and try to do that? But then, look, there, there reaches a point where, you know. We actually, you mentioned hostage. When, when the yeah. safety of the public you, is. You mentioned hostage question. negotiations. In those cases, we actually do employ psychology. You know, it's not uncommon. Why we don't apply that same rule of thumb to domestic disputes, as an example? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, so, you know, not not every call needs the same thing. I mean, I think that's the thing about, you know, police work is. Yeah. By the way, my observation would be that there are probably no two domestic violence calls or any other similar, you know, alleged crime that is is the same and can can always be handled based on the manual. I mean, a lot of it is just train your people. Mm -hmm and hope that they have enough training to adapt to every situation they find them in. And that's a difficult thing to ask. That's why police work is a difficult, difficult job. I mean, you know, but like a defunding the police type thing. I mean, that, 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 that's stupid. I mean, come on. I mean, you want to change some policies or whatever, fine. But I mean, Mm -hmm. getting, doing away with police or, or having less officers or whatever, it's, it's not going to solve. I, I got to yeah, say wow. something. I got to say something to Alan, and and that is that my dislike for the police is wholly observational, because I have never in my life been arrested for anything, okay, and have never had any kind of altercation with a policeman that would get me arrested. I've been, I heard you I've, were slapped I, around I, no, in Miami. No, I wasn't slapped around in Miami, I, but I was I was terrorized by the police in Miami. That's what I meant. Yes, for nothing. For Bad nothing. Bad choice of words. Okay, uh, because somebody had called the police department and said, this guy on the radio is saying horrible things about the police department. And I hadn't been saying horrible things about the police department. It was somebody who just didn't like my show. And the next thing I know, these cops are pulling me over with a police dog snarling. Uh, you know, telling me to put my hands on the car and blah, 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 blah. And I don't know what the hell is going on here. So, you so know. can I say something with that? You cut me off in the middle. Of, you asked me a question, Alex. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to answer it, but you cut me off. And so I, I am not against sending psychologists out. What I'm saying is, is that like, <laughs> like, like Kathleen said, a lot of those people end up dying in the line of duty. Police officers, more police officers are killed in traffic stops and domestic disturbances than anywhere else. Yeah, now, how many people that, are actually killed in domestic disturbances that the cops don't get to? Okay, well, that's... that's well, I mean, what we're talking sub, about is that you're, you're saying is, that police get killed, but they don't get killed probably disproportionately to the public. Okay, you're just saying it because they they have a dangerous job. They have a dangerous job and they took it. But they do have a lot of things in their favor. You know, they have the equipment they need. They have the supposedly the training they need to handle now these kinds of Now you're defending it. A few minutes ago, you were against well, it. Uh, defending what? The police and psychologists. No, I'm not. Out. I'm not defending. Here's what I'm saying. I've never had. A, 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 I've never been arrested in my life. That's good. Nor have I been accused of any crime in my life. 
but I have had this visceral dislike for the police because I have observed how they act. And when it came time for me to be protesting something like the war in Vietnam, I suddenly realized the police weren't on my side. The police didn't want to uphold my right to free speech. They wanted to kick me in the shins in Times Square when I was protesting. Okay. What does this have to do with the police? It has a lot to do with my attitude about police. Well, it has a lot to do with my attitude about police. Yes, um, uh, Kathleen. So take it from someone who has been in and out of jail Mm -hmm. from the time I was 19 till I was 24. Aggravated assault, traffic violations. You mean I was going with a con? I was going with a con? Well, (laughs) no, because by that time I... Yeah, up. Yeah. And I also have a BA in criminology with a minor in psychology because I wanted to know all the laws and I wanted to know why I was doing the shit I was doing. The cops were nothing but good to me and you know, about three or four times I was a class A asshole. Yeah. 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 I, I'm uh, actually surprised, Kathleen, you didn't become a cop. I think you would have done good. Kevin. I couldn't pass the background. But my <laughs> uncle, who was head of homicide in Oakland for years, Sergeant But you John did do it, you did do security for UPS. Well, yeah. Yeah. So but you were kind of. I, I used to call you, you a would UPS have been cop. The one to <laughs> talk the person off the bridge, mm. really? because you just have that type of personality. Yeah. I mean, I got numerous employees out of the game. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Kevin, um, why don't you join in on this? How do you, how do you feel about? Uh, uh, you know, the defunding attitude about the cops. I don't agree with defunding. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, but do you, um, do you think I've we... I've seen a lot of, you know, I watch some of these cop shows and I've seen a lot of cops actually de-escalate a lot, yes. of, a lot of situations on their own. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's the ones with the proper training that can do it. It's the ones, you know, we constantly hear the bad apples and those are the yep. ones that stick out all the time i think there's a lot of them out there that do good work and i think that those are the ones that we don't hear about um i agree that there probably is a good situation like josh was saying that there's a good situation where you know they could be brought you know the situation escalates a little bit and then we bring in the uh, psychologist and then back the guns away that could probably be resolved um you know, so that the, you know, the tension is, is lowered a little bit, mm-hmm. that would probably be good. But defunding is not going to do anything but screw things up. I, I don't agree with it at all. I and mean, you know what, when it comes to cops, so I did retail security for Target in the 80s and 90s. I worked in Pittsburgh slash Antioch, and all we ever busted were hypes. And listen, my job was to protect the assets. I had nothing against the thieves. I mean, there were certain reasons why people steal, and I certainly understood that. So we'd get people in the office, and I was nice as pie. Hey, if you have any needles, heroin, just put it up on the table. I will tell the officer you totally, you know, if you drop it, there's a white sheet, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I remember busting this gal, and she goes, oh, my God, I heard about you down at the methadone center. Okay, so within certain cities, the gangsters, the thieves know who the good cops are and who the assholes mm-hmm. are. And so you the look assholes at end up with a yeah. badge on the wall. You know what a badge on the wall means? They're going to shoot and kill you because you're a fucking asshole. I mean, okay. bottom line all is right. we're all humans. If I bust you for shoplifting, okay. I'm going to treat you the way I would like to be treated. And that's look, respectful. Ke- Kevin wants but, to talk here. But yeah. look at your situation, Alex. Is I'll bet you nine out of ten times when you were doing your protesting, you weren't over there throwing shit at a cop, right? No, no. You were just out there protesting. No, but I, I got. But it's all the dickheads that were out there throwing shit at the cops. No, that caused we weren't. Cops we weren't in this you. particular case. We weren't throwing anything at anybody. We were just protesting. But, and the cops came. The cops came up to us. The cops came. Caused them to come after you. But the cops came. No, nobody else was doing that. Not that night. It was New Year's Eve, in fact, in Times Square. Okay. You know, I think. Back and women, let me finish. Let me know, let me finish. Let assholes. me. Can I? Can I finish? They're, 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 you know, I, I'm not. I'm not yes. defending them in that time. 
but that, you know, what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying too. is, is that I remember they just came up to me. The cop looked at me like I was the worst kind of criminal ever, and he kicked oh, me. I, I, he kicked I know, me. That he kicked me in the, the shin. They, yeah, they that were after the hippies. Yeah. They were after yep. the hippies. Yeah, and yeah. and and they weren't respecting my right to protest the war in Vietnam, right? Which right. I had a right to protest. Right. Yeah, but so he I would say two things about that. The first one I would say is all the like defund the police banter or whatever, or at least a good majority of it when it really ramped up was, you know, because, you know, Officer Chauvin, you know, killed George Floyd in Minneapolis mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. But I guess I would remind people, number one, that, OK, but he broke the law and he's now going to prison for it. I mean, you know that I mean, so what? Why do you need to defund well, the police? Well, uh, well, if it's a problem, to he begin with, law, uh, yeah. he's going to yeah. prison. Yeah, but I, I, mean, I, I agree with you. If that were the, if that were the norm rather than the exception, but that is not the, well, that is not the, in the norm. In the past, it has not been, but yeah. perhaps we are entering a new era. I mean, I, I think that we all agree that that is going to be perhaps looked back on in thirty years from now on documentaries and PBS specials or whatever as a, as a point where um, people sat at home and uh, didn't necessarily know as much about why these blacks at these sit-ins and all that were getting this, that, and the other, and then, wow, they saw it on camera, and that was right. ridiculous. And, and, and the question and, is, is did we, have, did we have to go through all the riots and the you know the burning buildings and everything else to get to that point could we have done it without then, all that That's well the second, you know something I, 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 let, me, let me talk for, let me just answer uh, uh, let me a answer Kevin for a sec quick second here okay. uh, uh, the burning of buildings uh, is is the result it's not the uh, not the uh, uh, the action itself uh, it's a uh, it's it, somebody once said how can you how can you uh, how can I prevent the uh, the infection, uh, if you can't prevent the disease, you know that we haven't done enough of our own homework to prevent that sort of thing. The fact is that when you have people burning buildings and so on, that is out of pure frustration. It's to get people's off. it's to get people's attention. It's like the old right. story about the guy who's going down the road and says, uh, you know, in a cart, you know, you've got to treat a donkey with love and kindness. And then the donkey just stops dead in his track, so he gets out of the uh, wagon, takes a two-by-four, and hits the donkey right between the eyes, and then the donkey starts going again. And he said, I thought you said you treat him with love and kindness. And he said, yeah, but first you got to get their attention. This is an attention-getting action. The people are, not, it's funny in this country, but we don't pay attention to anything until property is involved. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, really. But so but the, the only other thing I was going to say, too, was just like, you know, in the discussion about police brutality in the 60s or 70s or whatever, I think that if you look at that, though, that police forces then, as opposed to now, mm -hmm. were not nearly as reflective of society as they are now. In other words, yeah. your police forces then, I would make a pretty decent estimate to say we're mostly male, we're mostly white, mm -hmm. and we're mostly probably 35 and older, for right. the most part. Right. And the ones that were younger than that were trainees that did whatever they were told. But I think police yeah. forces now nationwide are much more made up of you know, 25 year olds, uh, a lot of women, certainly a lot more minorities, Latinos, blacks, whatever, mm -hmm. and are also made up of a lot more people with firsthand combat or war experience. Fresh out of the military. Who, who witnessed a lot of civilian brutalities and things like that mm -hmm. that turned them, you know, an eye to saying, man, you know, we're this this is shitty. We should not treat. Yeah, people. well, you know, so, I mean, to begin they with, they have a lot more experience, it, I think. Kevin, you know, I'm not saying that. that I agree with burning down buildings or anything like that. I'm just saying that if you if we can't if we can't prevent the disease, how can you prevent the? In other words, if you can't prevent the re, if you're asking us to prevent the reaction, then why don't you do something about preventing the action that caused the reaction? That's all I'm saying. You know. 
that are, mm. are, are or somehow, but the minute you start burning property, oh, then people talk, people get mad. I, I, think, you know. I think if you see somebody lighting a match, you ought to shoot them in the hand. Okay. Yeah. You know. I, I, I'm what do you, what do you think, Kevin? Do you agree with Alan at all on that? No. 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 Oh, okay. Because Alan's being <clears throat> sarcastic. Because Alan's being very sarcastic. But here's, here's the question I was going to say, though, on the, the cop who, got a, who went to jail. Mm -hmm. Chauvin, I think, is mm -hmm. it? See, would he, would he have gone to jail if they didn't have this on tape? On camera, no, no, absolutely not. And this is why no, we're in Charlotte. They, and then he would have got away. It, it would have been. Yeah. He would have murdered a guy. The well, only reason why he did wait, any wait, time went to jail is because we had him dead to no, rights. No, you're uh, 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 Charlie. Charlie. That's absolutely the truth. That's the only reason Chauvin went. That was the only. That's it. Him you didn't have that guy take that tape. He'd be still at the job. Well, right I now. think the thing that has spurred on the whole Black Lives movement and a lot of the movements that are going on is the fact that we do have all these cameras out there now. Yeah, but Alex, and these things are see, being like, seen. But here's a words, question that I posed, yeah. though: If you didn't get him on camera, he'd still be at the job. He probably. But if still I murdered would be somebody working, in the yeah. street, yeah. I'd be in the big house. Yeah, but you see, the fact is that because we're saying that if there was no camera there, he'd still be working. That bespeaks why we have to somehow start doing something about the and police. And would that bespeak that the police because can't police it, themselves and do the right well, thing and say, hey, if, listen, if somebody we dies, a like this guy. He's a murderer. Did we not have cameras in the 60s? Well, they didn't have it like we have them now. No, they no. don't have them like that, but they did have them and they did show them. And they but did. Kevin, would the cops have well, well, we, we had we had somebody. I understand what you're First saying. Time we ever saw police That's the problem. On tape. They would have covered his ass. No, I understand what you're saying, but they were there. We were fucking murdered. Yeah, but I think I think uh, cameras were almost considered to be illegal. Yeah, they were. They yeah. were. They, they would were. have covered his. They would have covered his well, ass well, because the right. police. Hold, hold on a second, Tony. Hold on. And that's why you had the Nat Commission in New York because Sarpergo took a bullet in the back of the head because they wanted Tony, to kill him. Tony, you've been drinking coffee tonight. No, because you oh. know what, Alex? <laughs> a cop can get away with murder because they can't do the right fucking no, thing. No, but here's the thing. Here's the thing that I'm that I'm. Bullshit! Being, they're not above the law. Uh, we've got to do um, um, a better job of. Uh, in other words, if, if the cameras weren't around today. People free. would still be doing the same thing. Oh, I, it, I agree with that. You know, I agree with but, that. Murder, don't worry uh, but but here's where I I'm don't understand. Yeah, here's you. Chauvin doing what he's doing. And he know there are people around him with he cameras. That guy Wait a minute, let me, hey, please, Tony, let me talk. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's let me talk. disgusting. Let me talk, please. Yeah, sorry. All right. Uh, 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 Chauvin uh, is sitting there on this guy's neck. And... Everybody around him has got little, you know, their little iPhones, and they're taking pictures of it, right? Doesn't he know that? Is he so stupid that he didn't realize he that he should do something about it? He deserves you know, that he, that he can't. He, he's going to be called to account for this. Good. No, Good. but I'm he saying the cameras the don't seem to stop I don't anybody. Think he, I don't think he thought he was killing him. He might not have, but he knew he was putting him out. I mean, Ray, three guys there. Ray, there was no yeah, reason to I don't buy him. that, John. Hold on a second. Ray, oh, he Ray he is trying to be protected by Ray the police, is, like yeah. he usually, like everybody else like was. Like walk away Ray, from Ray is trying to say something. Oh, Ray? I just wanted to say. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say that um, the person who took the full video of the whole thing was some young woman, and she got a uh, Nobel Peace Prize for it. No, she <laughs> didn't. She got a Pulitzer. Doesn't matter. Oh, Pulitzer? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was a Pulitzer. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, okay. Pulitzer. Yeah. She's not even a journalist. Know, She's not even a journalist. You're right. But no, it was a yeah. woman. It was a woman. Yeah, it was a teenage like kid. Yeah, she was like 18. Or well, let me, let me, let me just ask you. Just, I, I just, doesn't matter. No, because Tony said it was a... I'm sorry. It's irrelevant. Tony said it was a guy with a camera, and I'm saying... Oh, I'm sorry. It was a woman. It's okay. I was just trying doesn't to... matter who did it. He knew what he meant. No, I was just trying to clear the... Never mind. Wait a minute. Wait, look. Will you let Ray finish what he was saying? Go ahead, Ray. I was just trying to give some credit to the actual person who did it. It wasn't just a guy standing around. It was a young teenage girl who took the entire, the long video. Oh, she, 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 her, her, uh, her video was a watershed moment. Okay. Um, but I don't know if she should have gotten a Pulitzer for it because she just saw something going on and she started shooting it. You know. Yeah, I'm not making a judgment about whether she should have gotten it or anything. I just, 
All I was doing was telling yeah. Mr. Ryan Tony who did it. it wasn't like which you know which, what I don't okay, get. Which begs begs the question. I have a big question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Today was uh, the uh, so uh, the the day in which it's not Juneteenth. Tomorrow's <laughs> Juneteenth, but today was the day we observed Juneteenth. So what did you do? Did you hold Juneteenth parties? Any of you? Charlie, did you hold a Juneteenth party at your house? I've been in Texas 40 years. I've never had a Juneteenth party. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. You They're going to drum you out of the uh, black uh, union yeah. Yeah. over that. They're going to make you give your black license back or something. You know. I mean, you, well, you, you, you talk to other blacks, right, in your day-to-day -day meanderings oh how do they God. feel about juneteenth <laughs> well i mean it's, it's important to some some blacks yeah especially native texans but <laughs> i grew up in chicago yeah i heard of juneteenth till i got here yeah right right um Woo, chicago halstead street <laughs> I've been many an hour on halstead street yeah yeah, Aren't, yes, isn't uh, that a gay neighborhood? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't care. John yeah. John Larkin has his hand up. John. Yeah, the the lady's name was Darnella Frazier, and uh, it it was a special citation award. Yeah. So so yeah, it, it wasn't was, like a fiction or. A, yeah, it wasn't know. a Pulitzer Pulitzer. It was a, like yeah, a no. hey, good going. It was going. still an award. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was a good thing she did. You know, I mean. I took guts too. Oh they, yeah, they came after her. Yeah. Did they? Did they try hey, to? Hey, you know her? what? On my way to New York to see my husband, I'm gonna go to Texas, <laughs> and Charlie and I are gonna have a barbecue. Can I do something? My mother would have loved to hear, Alex. I always wanted to do this. Ready, Alex? What? Honey, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> you probably just rolled over in heaven, Leo. You're never gonna believe no. this. No. Oh, what is she doing here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Honey, I have to work late tonight. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, but my mother um, was so happy when he said. You that. know, I mean, uh, so I mean, uh, basically, you know, I just, uh, I, I, for some reason, I don't know where I developed my disdain for the police. I don't because, think it's disdain, Alex, because I, I am not negative cop. I just don't like bad cops. Well, you don't know that yes. my feeling isn't disdain? How dare you tell me what my feeling is? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, maybe I'm only trying to make my <laughs> you're right. You know, you know, Tony's got a point. Most good cops don't like bad cops either. Because I know plenty of cops. Right. I mean, and I have two detectives in the people. family. One is retired. Both of them are tired. Well, I, sometimes I'll come on the show and I'll put down something that Israel has done, and they go, "But you're Jewish," and I go, "Yeah." Isn't that so? That means I have to Jewish. like every Jew, you know? No, you know it's about right and wrong. How yeah. simple. Yeah, well, that, well, I mean, I, you know, I just always felt that the police were, when I was growing up, they just had yes. too much power. Okay. Yep. And I the agree. and these were not what I considered great people who had this power you know it usually was people who never had any power in their lives and now all of a sudden they had it because they got a gun in fact i always just like make a joke about the guys i would run into who would become cops when i that i went to school with all were the big juvenile delinquents when they were in school yeah you're about you to know sure. I'm, my friend michael denchowski became a cop and all he did in elementary school was sniff glue in the back of the room <laughs> exactly i'm telling you he was stupid as the wall i was like oh well, my you're God. gonna be stupid. Kids, my sister says michael's a cop i said holy shit. hope it's not in queens i said yeah. you know what's funny is uh, i wonder, uh, I wonder if we're, we're glue, glue, sniff we're glue oh, sniffers anybody know who ken anybody know who ken diamond is no and mm -hmm. he became a cop Eddie Haskell from Leave It to oh. Beaver. Oh, what the heck he knows that? He's a cop? He, well, he's since Most passed away, but yeah, yeah was, he became yeah. a cop. Did he make any money on How do you go from being an actor to a cop? Because you, you go, you, you, unless you're you, right? Hey, hey, wait yeah, a minute. So number one, did, number one, there are no more not, actors. Wait a minute. Surprised. Oh, can I talk? Let me talk. It's my show, okay? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, how it happens, uh, Tony, is you're a bad actor like he was, yeah. and you can't get any other work, okay? You didn't think I paid good, Alex? And so you figure, what am I going to do with my life? You go, you know, mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a cop. 
and then you become a cop. Yeah, that's a and, and don't Change say, how do you go from being in, an actor to being a cop? Most actors yeah. don't work. The ask, funniest one was Steven Seagal. Well, ask, and ask, no, ask, ask, yeah. ask Gray. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Tony, calm yeah. down. Calm down, Tony. It's the call. Ray Renati is, is an actor. Am I right? Ray, most actors don't work. Ray's been talking nonstop for five minutes and has mic off. <laughs> Based on the mic, if you take the thing okay, off the Okay, will you let him talk? <laughs> please. I asked him a question. Will you let him talk? Yeah, Sorry. right, right. Most actors are usually unemployed. Really? Yeah. No, I think yeah. they say that 98% of our union is out of work. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. there was a time when I was in, and then people go through spurts. Like, I was employed almost all the time for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't. You know, it's, it's, uh, and Alex, you've been through that a whole bunch of times. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you get commercial? Yeah. I always wondered if the commercial people got paid a lot. Like, remember we Oh, they get a lot. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, if it's a national commercial, Commercial to change. Yeah. Well, that pays. You can make a lot of commercials in the seventies. Commercial, yeah. you can if it pays a lot. If it yeah. plays, if it plays a lot in the right markets. Yeah, flow is making if a you're bunch. Like, you get a, you yeah. get, you get, you, 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 get, you, you get, you get a national like on the show like the cell phone. Yeah. I can't get like, a word in edgewise on here. Sorry. Like, can you Poor imagine Ray on a BX commercial? Taking over his show. <laughs> well, no, I'm just trying to say something to add to what the question is here. And that is that the, the most money I ever made for the littlest amount of work was yeah. when I did a couple of commercials. You oh, know, what I, you didn't, I didn't do a lot of them, but I did a, I did commercials. Uh, and um, but if you did TV commercials mm -hmm. and you did a national TV commercial and it ran for thirteen weeks, you made a lot of money out of that, right, Debray? Mm -hmm. You could wow. walk away with yeah. twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. He, he, really? For yes, I have I have a friend who in LA, he does like two or three commercials a year. Mm -hmm. He does four four or so guest spots on TV shows, and he makes a very nice living. Yeah, very yeah. Nice. yeah. Because what happens you is you get paid, right? you get paid every time it gets played, and then if they renew it for another thirteen weeks and keep running it nationally, I'm not talking about local, but nationally, you keep getting paid pretty much what you got the first time around. You know, it's it's very very lucrative, but there's yeah. so few people doing that, and it's what so they good. do now is they also cast these things and produce them in smaller cities where they don't have to pay union rates. Okay, so that's been the new wrinkle in the whole game. I mean, I I talked to a friend of mine, uh, Pat St. John, who is a uh, uh, is a uh, does voiceovers and you've probably heard him a dozen and a half times and I said I want to get into doing some voiceovers how do I do that he said forget it there's no work out there he said most of the work is being done in small towns across the United States they go do a lot of the audio they have some guy in Des Moines do it and they don't have to pay him union rates you especially know, so. with COVID now that's become huge yeah people were auditioning Remotely, and they yeah. realize they could save the And he money said it's have. it's too difficult. He said I'm lucky I'm in it at all, but I got in it at a time when, when I could, uh, you know, when I could establish myself. So that's that's mm -hmm. what happens. But uh, Eddie Haskell became a cop because he probably didn't mind the idea of becoming a cop. And, exactly. You know. And, he was and Steven Seagal became a cop because he was just an asshole. He was just an asshole. Yeah, exactly. David Lee Roth became an EMT after. Yeah, he yes, he did. New York overnight. Absolutely, he yeah, did. I I said, now to that him. you know, that's a job. Man. It gotta be nice to be an EMT. You know, He's you feel you're out. doing something Work if, if you save a life yes. or whatever. Absolutely. You know, that's got to be. Uh, there are certain lines of work. You know, I always said. Uh, if I were a doctor, I guess I'd want to be like uh, a baby doctor, because oh, for the nice. well, for the most part, you, well, your patients aren't dying on you. They do occasionally, true, but yeah. they aren't dying on you. And then women are giving birth, and they're happy, and the family's happy, and you know it's a happy business. But man, yes. I would not want to be a cancer doctor. Uh, you know, I yeah. mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, my mom. When my mom lost my dad, she was going to nursing school and she went into oncology. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was there for about five years, and then she went into um, she went into um, prenatal 
and then she went into um you know birth so when i had my son she was at tracy sutter Boy, all those nurses knew who my mom was because by that time she had been the head honcho at washington hospital in fremont mm -hmm. and more man she loved it it yeah. was all new uh, 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 <laughs> who do you what what medical profession do you think mm -hmm. has the highest suicide rate Dentist. You're absolutely right, yes. Tony. Yep. I remember you saying that, Alex. Dentist. Dentist. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because it's so you... fucking boring. Well, I mean, I what is it? It's not, not medicine. It's carpentry. You know, and pretty much, what do you go? Oh, well, I put a, another tooth in somebody's mouth That's today. A college. Wow. Actually. And nobody yeah. wants to be there. Like everybody just doesn't yeah. want to see you. I mean, and certain doctors, certain doctors uh, can say, "Hey, I saved a life today," or "I made somebody's life better by taking care of their problem." But the dentist, it's just like, "Oh yeah, I got to do that," and they drill in there and they do the carpentry. It's carpentry. I pull and the it, tooth. And, and the boredom is what causes them to commit suicide. Suppose I made seven thousand dollars today. That's got to be a hard job. Well, I don't know that dentists dentists do not get as well paid. My, I have a, you know, I have an oncologist mm -hmm. who did a radiation thing on me, and oh, then he did yeah. the seeds on me. And between the two, uh, I, my insurance was charged one hundred and ten thousand dollars. <gasps> I now I don't know. Once uh, they get whatever Medicare will give them, uh, there's a lot less than that. But I still want to know what he walked home with. For like an hour's work. Oh, he you probably know? got paid a lot, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, he saved my life, so I'm not. Thank gonna, God. Yeah, you're right. I'm not going to complain about it. But and he went to a good school, so I guess let him make the money. Well, and, and a couple of us here. Well, 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 Je uh, Je no Jeff, was, Jeff was <laughs> trying to say something. Jeff, I said, you, you know, these doctors have to go through quite a training, particularly yeah. if the guys. Like a brain surgeon. Yeah, but I had some. I had one doctor who was about seventy years old tell me that he has to, you know, he had he had to go to medical school. He's got to pay that off. And I went, you haven't paid it off yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, you can't use that excuse now. Yeah, you're right. That's got to be a long time. He's seventy. Don't they have to go, you know, to get trained with the new technology? As you know, I think you do. New, yeah, stuff yeah. Up? I think there's a constant. You have to constantly retrain or if there are new protocols and you want to use them you have to go to a, take a class on it and so on um you know who's had a lot of medical here is uh, is kevin kevin you've you've had some your whole back is shot right no not my back what what is it exactly it's your my legs my your, ankles your legs your ankles and, Those are the ones yeah, too, I you know, and I, I we can't even begin to imagine how much money you've spent on that process. Oh, that's tricky. He, now he's laughing. What? What? We got an estimate for us? Oh, fuck. No. No. Is it oh, more? Is it a lawsuit too? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> is it more than my uh, my uh, my radiation and uh, I seeds? I have no clue. Really? It's been going on since two thousand four. Jeez almighty. Is this a wake-up call for you, Alex, that doctors make a lot of money and rip you off? I don't think they're ripping you off. I don't think they rip you off. You know, a doctor, let me put it this way. I go to my doctor's Good office. Oh, we're almost run out of time here. Just quickly, I run into my doctor's office, and what's he got? He's got like five women there who are all dealing with the insurance companies yeah. and the billing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they their overhead for staff is not not tiny okay so uh that would be my my take on it you know so that, that it, they do have they do have expenses so whatever in fact my doctor once they get through with medicare and stuff like that my doctors make about five cents on the dollar you gotta you, he pay, you pay he pays you <laughs> yeah he pays me Hey, listen, now that's the end of the week, and uh, I thank you all for having joined me. Boy, the sun has gone down where Schmooty is. We can we can hardly see her right now. Uh, Who's going to see Jackie? Thanks, John Larkin. Appreciate it. Always appreciate it having you here uh, and, and putting your two cents worth in. Thanks to Josh Wheeler and to Charlie Wallace. 
Uh, Kevin, always a pleasure to have you here. Always a pleasure, Tony. Same with you, Ray Renati and Jeff Stein. And the lovely and attractive, the pulchritudedness of uh, Kathleen Schmoody. Honey, I'm home. Everybody give a big wave. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you, okay? Saying goodbye to you. There they go, folks. There they go. That's our uh, that's our uh, citizen panel for this week. Uh, we'll uh, have more next week. Okay. Meantime, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the uh, uh, the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll be back again uh, next uh, Monday at four o'clock with our little Facebook uh, gathering. Uh, on our pop-up show and then we'll be back here on tuesday 10 30 same time same station in life and in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her and by the way if you aren't get vaccinated okay will you thanks bye